Hello everyone, Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage, uh, coming to you live from a very rainy New York City, so if you're on the East Coast, I hope you're staying dry today. Uh, we are sitting with Abigail Cohen, she has the upcoming Netflix series Fate, The Winx Saga, coming next month, um, so very excited to pick her brain on the series, her uh, other various projects of the past, her career, um, and all the advice that she has for you guys, as always. So I'm just going to bring her up here and uh, see if we can get this conversation going. And Abby, I see that you already requested, so thank you. Hey there. Hi. How's it going today? I'm Ben from Backstage. Um, it's nice Hi. to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. The, the, it's funny, the, the first interactions that we now have with each other are all virtual and on Instagram, but glad to see you're oh, doing well. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, where, where in the world are you calling in from? LA right now. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, so you're, you're missing this rainstorm in New York. That's good. Yeah, I just heard that. It's pretty, <laughs> is it cold there too? I'm it's, it's chilly. It's gross. It, it, it was one of the days that I'm grateful I don't have to commute into the office or anything. I can yeah. work from Exactly. Home. You don't feel so that. guilty for staying in. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but first things first, congratulations on this new Netflix series. Um, I know a lot of people are excited for it coming out next month. Um, and it's based on this really well-loved series on Nickelodeon, long running. Um, j just for starters, how did you get involved? Why did you want to jump into this franchise? Just how did it come together for you? Well, I got the audition and I read the script and I just fell in love and I just really loved the I mean the storyline and the fact that there were five you know leading female characters and the story that kind of revolved around them so I just I auditioned and the rest was history there you yeah go. I really loved the, the script when I first read it yeah absolutely what, what, what can you tell us about that audition process I'm sure that <laughs> there were a lot of talented uh, young yeah. women going up for those roles. So what did that look like for you? And um, what, what tips do you have for the audition room once you're actually in there? Um, so the audition, it was interesting because I was actually on my way up to Vancouver where I was shooting my other show. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of in a rush. And I don't think I, I just, I don't remember how I didn't have my car that day, but I know Oh, it was because I was going to LAX right after the audition. So I was, I was also leaving for like three months. So I had this giant suitcase that I was like, like carrying around with me. And I just remember going into the audition room and like stumbling in with this giant suitcase <laughs> and everyone's heads turned. I was like, hello. Yeah. I just like went and I sat and I just like, also because everyone's being quiet in the waiting room, I wanted to explain myself, but I mm -hmm. couldn't. So I just remember... And then I had to leave my, or I, no, I brought it into the audition room because I couldn't leave it out there. So I walked in. I don't even know if the casting director thought that I had a prop or something. It was just all weird, but <laughs> it was just so uncomfortable. Um, but then I left there thinking I would never be invited back. So Right. All was well that ends yeah. well, though. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I was invited back, clearly, but... Um, yeah, that's what I remember of the audition process. And then I remember they called me back and I, of course, was shocked. But um, I went back for, I think, two other reads okay. and then found out, like, I think three, three or four days later that I got the role and I had to fly out a week later to Ireland. And was it always for Bloom that you're going out for? Mm -hmm. I, obviously, th this kind of showcases five five uh lead women so right. it was bloom the whole time though yes it was Got it. okay yeah um well mm -hmm. what what tips do you have for leaving an impression um and not everyone can bring a giant suitcase to yeah bring a suitcase so, yeah. <laughs> um i mean that's a tricky one i think you know when you are auditioning as as an actor in la or new york or even just self-taping um I mean, for in the room auditions, I think it's really important and what I learned from just doing it day in and day out for like, mm -hmm. I mean, two, three years, just going in and relaxed, I mm -hmm. feel like, and that's kind of easier said than done. But the way that I would kind of relax myself is almost let go of the project already. Mm -hmm. And like before I walked into the room, I would just be like, I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't care. Even though I really did. 
Um, <laughs> of, course, of course. But I would just tell myself that and go in. Also, I remember I got the best advice from a friend one time. He was like, he was like, just think of auditioning. Well, he first asked me, he was like, you love acting, right? I was like, yeah, I freaking love it. He was like, okay, think, he was like, you love being on a set, right? I was like, yes, and I wish I could do it all the time. And he was like, okay, think of auditioning as kind of, it's like being on a set without the insane amount of pressure. Mm -hmm. He's like, you get to go in and you get to act and then just leave. He's yeah. like, you get to go and think of it as a as an opportunity to play. He's like, you're playing with the casting director. You're gonna, you're going to kind of create and figure out what, what they want, what you want. And, mm -hmm. and then you get to get up and go enjoy the rest of your day. Right. And going in with that mindset changed everything for me because I also, in my head, I was always scared of the casting director because I was mm -hmm. like, they want you to fail. They want you to, I don't know, like they're looking yeah. for every flaw. And that's not true at all. When you go in and you're ready to like, they want you to succeed just as much as you want to succeed. Mm -hmm. And you guys are just there to play and have fun. It creates just like a much more relaxed atmosphere. And I feel like that also then allows kind of the creative flow if that yeah. makes sense yeah no absolutely yeah. and at the end of the day this is just an opportunity for you to do what you love yeah and obviously you get to do it every day right right yeah. if you get in your head about it that's very easy <laughs> there's some <laughs> things riding on this situation for sure but mm -hmm. at the end of the day if you just toss it when you're done and uh do what you love then you got to embrace that i like that exactly advice. yeah and always having something planned after the audition. Oh, That's sure, what I also yeah. did too. Yeah. Like walking in there knowing that like I had somewhere to go right after. It also gets you out of your head. It gets right. you like you're already thinking of like where you're going after so that you're not like married to the project. Totally. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's just an opportunity to play, have fun, and then you walk out and you yeah. leave it That's there. perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> if I were an actor, I would put that to you, certainly. Um, <laughs> now, I, I do want to hear a bit about this project. And I, I, it's literally set in the other world. You're, you're mm -hmm. building a fantastical realm for audiences and not too dissimilar from what we've seen from you in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Um, what's most exciting for you about jumping into these worlds that uh, are fantastical, are magic, and r really just uh, p getting to play. What's exciting for you about that? I mean, the fact that it is, you know, magical, and they're just, I mean, they're endless possibilities, you know, mm -hmm. there's no, there's nothing that can't happen. So every time you get a script, you are most likely to be shocked by what's in there, you know, <laughs> like it's, as opposed to playing a real life character where, you know, it's, kind of probably predictable this is like you never know i love yeah, that yeah. and i love that you can kind of just play and really really use your imagination on these types of projects yeah. Yeah. In, in terms of the i mean to get to the the actory process of it all though do you find that you're you still need to give a human grounded performance despite these larger than life circumstances right yeah. So, so what, what does your script work look like? What is what, what kind of tricks of the trade do you have for building a character? Um, what, what does that look like for you? Um, so, I mean, what I do when I, I mean, the building the character is different than like the script work for me because the script, yeah. what I do with script, script work is I, whenever I get a script, I um, basically I do an entire outline of the script because for some reason my brain my brain just gets all jumbled with the entire story and I you know on set you're you're filming completely out of order so right. you're going in and you may like if you're not aware of what happened right before this one scene that you're filming or what's going to happen right after you could deliver the scene a completely different way than it's supposed to be right. delivered. So you so, want to map it out. You want a time. <laughs> you want that? a time stamp of what happens when. You yes. want to map it out in a way. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, some actors can do it. Some actors just know exactly. And I've met those actors. I'm not that actor. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I walk onto set with my little like timeline, and I can just like point to like like what happened right before. Right. And right. I, yeah. So I I do that. I always I sit down, and it also like writing it out for me really helps me 
comprehend what's really going on um, and putting it into my own, in like in my own words. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so I'll do that. And it'll, I'll just have like the bullet points because that really, really helps me. And then throughout that, I'm, you know, able to, yeah, decide how I want to portray the scene or how I want to do the scene because then you're really able to see what happened before and after mm -hmm. and where you're wanting to go and how you want to maybe lead up to what's about to happen and in your performance and or portray that through your performance. So um, that's helped me. But the character building, I mean, with this kind of with this kind of project, you know, you're told you're told a week before. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, that's a more difficult, um, yeah, more difficult part to it. But um, I mean, we were, we were very lucky because we got there and we had like a couple weeks of prep. So mm -hmm. we um, actually did a lot of kind of character development and um, working with one another and figuring out like, how we wanted to you know, interact with each other. And um, that helped a lot. Yeah. But yeah, and I also think that it really worked in this case, because in in my case, I should say, because I, you know, I showed up, and Bloom also shows up kind of shy and not knowing where she is. And, mm -hmm. you know, kind of so unaware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, in the first episode, I, that's kind of how it is. And, you know, things progress but um that also helps because you know you get kind of into the into the groove of things as well so yeah that's i mean that was my character development for this but yeah yeah fair enough fair enough mm -hmm. and for, i mean you're working on this show and with uh chilling adventures of sabrina you have such uh, a young and talented ensemble that you're working with um, what, what makes a good scene partner in your book? What, what really excites you when the juices are flowing, the scene's going? Um, how, how do you, what would you like in a scene partner? Um, I mean, that's a interesting question because I think, I think the chemistry off screen is the most important thing. So mm. if you have a connection off screen, it, it just makes the scene so much easier and, and flow so much more. Yeah. So I think, I think whoever, yeah, like whenever you are just, whenever you just click with someone, it's, it just flows in the scene. So I think that's my favorite kind of scene partner. But I also like everyone on the, like in the cast, we all clicked, like we all mm -hmm. got along, like the minute we got there. So that helped a lot and we just, enjoyed every moment of it too yeah. and having someone that's just fun you know and someone that isn't taking it too too seriously in this kind of environment mm -hmm. I feel like when you are just there to really enjoy your time and really enjoy one another it really does show on screen so I think that was not saying you shouldn't take it seriously you definitely should but sure. um yeah <laughs> don't don't quote me on that but like <laughs> when you're yeah like when you're just really enjoying it and you and you find the the joy in the in the craft in the art that is the most fun to fun people to work with I should absolutely say. absolutely yeah. and i i know that uh i mean sabrina has such a beloved ensemble and you guys mm -hmm. are friends off camera that's oh, yeah. obvious. glad to hear that that was the case for uh, Fate, the Wing Saga as well. Um, just a couple more questions for you. I know, I, just to rewind a bit to the very early days of your career, I know that you were born and raised in Florida before <laughs> moving to Los Angeles just a handful of years ago. Um, have you always acted? Like what, what role did the performing arts play in your life growing up? And when did you decide to take the plunge and pursue it as, for a living? Yeah, um, I, that's like it's like a yes and no kind of thing for me because I I had always wanted to since I was I mean I don't remember a time where I didn't want to I was always performing in my family and putting on shows and stuff like mm -hmm. that um I remember being like seven eight nine and just begging my mom to 
let me do it and just mm -hmm. let me go be an actress. But of course, you know, she was like, no, you need to go to school and be <laughs> right. a child. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't really remember a time where I didn't want to. I was in kind of a smaller town, so there weren't many opportunities. I mean, in Orlando, there, you know, that you have the Disney stuff, you have the, the commercials. Mm -hmm. And I got into that when I was, I think, it was around like 12 or 13 because I was homeschooled my mm -hmm. yeah my eighth grade year um but then i went to high school and did i was pretty heavy into sports so i you know that takes up so much time right um but i then went to yeah i went to university of florida for a semester um did all my online classes because or did all of my classes online because i my secret plan was to end up going to LA. Um, <laughs> right. But I went and yeah, just decided after a semester that I would pick up my classes and go to LA and pursue it full time. Oh, and I left out the part that when I was 13, I, while I was doing the commercials and stuff in Orlando, I, and modeling throughout high school, but um, my mom and I flew to LA, bless her soul. And we, interviewed with some agencies and I got an agent out in LA but they encouraged me to go to you know regular high school and then move out when I was 18 so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what I ended up doing but not bad it's, it's, it's kind of jumbled funny. but I hope that made sense <laughs> no absolutely I mean, it, it's always funny to hear just the, the different paths and avenues that people have into this industry um, and it's been great to see you finding success in these last few years um, just as a final question for you then uh, it has been a few years that you've been uh, hitting the audition room and trying to make it work. And obviously you have two huge Netflix projects under your belt already um, with a couple feature films on the way and whatnot. Um, if you could go back to the early stages of that, what's one thing that you've learned in your journey so far that you wish you knew when you were first getting your start? Huh, a lot of things, gosh. Um... I'd say that none of it's personal. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a, that's a big thing that I had to learn. Um, like when you do get, when you do get a role and when you don't get a role, like when you don't get a role, it's not personal. It's just because someone else fit the character better than you did. It's not mm -hmm. because you suck. It's not because you're going to be a failure. It's not because you're, because that's all that I would do. I would, lay in my room and cry and be like, oh, no, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I had to get to the point where it's not, I had to learn that it has nothing to do with me. I need to keep going. I need to keep showing up and putting in the work and it will, if I keep doing that, it will, it will pay off. And if people mm -hmm. keep doing that, it will pay off. And then also when you, you know, when you get the role, it's still not personal. It's right. not, it's not because you're the greatest and you're the best and you're, it's because you fit the character, you did the work and you're okay, great. That this mm -hmm. opportunity worked out. Awesome. But there will be more that don't. And that's just yeah. kind of the ups and downs of the industry and having that understanding now has helped me a lot. Cause I deal with a lot of anxiety regarding this entire industry. Cause it's, so scary it's anxiety you know, it's, inducing yeah. it's, it is it's horrible because some days you're like it's great and everything's going and then the next day you find out that a show's canceled and you don't know what to mm -hmm, do mm -hmm. so yeah um but also knowing that there will always be endless opportunities there will still yeah. be things that will continue to pop up and yeah. work out so i yeah, think exactly. that is a big thing that i had to learn and i'm still yeah. learning for sure yeah i mean le level-headedness with the successes with the failures you all mm -hmm. just kind of gotta put in the work and take it in stride that's all you can do yeah yeah um well awesome i think that's a great note to leave this conversation on um congratulations again on Thank the new you. netflix series and um it's been great to get to know you a little bit thanks, thanks for your so time. much yes you too yeah. thanks we'll be in touch all right all bye -bye. right bye